started. Um, I'm Norma Jean. For those of you who are new here, this is the National Life Force Canada Education Think Tank. Uh, Life Force Canada is more than just education, though. Our mission is to protect our freedoms and rights. So we're a platform that's made up of Canadians from across the nation who volunteer their time and energy to help create the Canadian Restoration Plan, which is an empowered future for all of us. So we work together and collaboratively as a nation. We work separately as provinces and individually as counties but always with the same purpose of creating a restoration plan for the new earth. So we have nine pillars in Life Force Canada. Education is just one of them. Uh, we have, I, I won't even be able to remember them all, but uh, I think that education is the most important because ultimately our future is dependent on how we raise and educate our children. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to join Life Force Canada and learn more about the other amazing initiatives that we have going on throughout the country. Um, until last summer, I was a special ed teacher in the public school system. Uh, I retired at the end of last year. I know, crazy. I'm far too young to retire. But um, I'm also the mom of two growing young men who both struggled to be successful in the current school system. So I know the system from both of those perspectives, and I've seen its many shortcomings, and that's why I um, agreed to facilitate this think tank. So apart from the glaring problems with our public school system, I think we know that it's time for us to move away from this current model of education that promotes competition and comparison and move towards one of collaboration and contributionism because we all have gifts that should be discovered and developed and shared with the world. And the education think tank was created to support all of us. So whether you're a parent, a teacher, a grandparent, or just simply someone who cares about the future of our children, um, we need to create a new vision. And that's why we meet here each week. It's a place to bring together people who are passionate about the education of our children and who want to create change. And um, I'm so pleased that the, we started in September. Here we are at the end of the school year. And um, many of the people that were our regular uh, attendees have kind of fallen away because like James, they are just creating change. And it's so wonderful um, to have so many people that were here that are actually working on creating change. So I feel like it was a job well done here, right? So DK mentioned our education portal and that is a database backed website that um, Marianne and I and Jade created uh, in hopes that we could help educators connect with parents and vice versa, people who want to step away from the public school system and are just looking to either offer or find services and resources. And so I will put that in the chat a little bit later, but if you or someone you know has a course or a workshop or is looking for something, uh, encourage them to have a look on there because we already have some really great offers on there. And the service is free to use. It's just a platform that we've put out because we want to help people. So if this is your first time here, there is a reactions button down here along the bottom. And uh, if you raise your hand for any questions or comments, we just find that that's the most efficient way to make sure that we have um, I'm sorry that everybody has an opportunity to speak. And I do see some new faces here, which is wonderful. So I'd like to um, take a minute for you to have a chance to um, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, what brought you here this evening. And um, let's start with Michael. Michael Frigerio. Frig oh, well. Oh, close. <laughs> okay, close. let me try again. Frigeroa. <laughs> Figueroa. There we go. Yes, that's correct. Hi, Thanks, I appreciate it, Norma. Um, Norma Jean. So um, yeah, my name is Michael. I am based in Coquitlam now, but in BC. And uh, I heard about uh, the New Earth Learning Pods through a couple of different people. This is the first time I'm kind of taking more of a, a dig into understanding what it is all about. Um, I believe I also met uh, Hila at uh, one of the leadership meetings in Coquitlam. And so uh, this, is, this is how I got um, the link for today. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've been uh, like a tutor for a long time. I don't do it anymore. But uh, education is something that I think is very important, as you said earlier uh, in the call. And uh, it's really uh, disheartening to see the breakdown of education ever since I graduated college. 
uh, it's gone further down. And uh, I think that there is really a good opportunity to kind of revamp everything. And so, um, you know, just wanted to learn a little bit more about what uh, the learning pods uh, look like today. Um, and then see if there might be people in the community where I'm from that might be able to take advantage of it uh, as you know, homeschooling or alternative schooling becomes more of a forefront in a lot of parents' minds. So yeah, happy to be here. Terrific, we're happy to have you. Um, yeah, there's a lot going, o going on over on that side of the bridge actually, just like down the road in Maple Ridge, they have a big uh, freedom group there called the Canadian Freedom Coalition that is very active in their community as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so thank you for, for joining us. And I'm just across on the other side of the bridge. So maybe I'll see you over there sometime. Sounds good. I'm in Surrey. So Linda, you're, I don't think you've been here before either. Have you? Uh, I've been once, but uh, I'm with the, I was with the PCQC with the session. Sorry, you were with the who? Uh, PCQC in Quebec uh, with Sasha. Oh, with Sasha, uh, okay. Yeah, and we were a bit, uh, well, it's been a long time since I assisted to the meeting. So I'm back with uh, here tonight because uh, I was in a school principal before and I left because of that kind of a system. So I'm looking into creating something new too. And I have uh, three of my grandchildren that are uh, homeschooling since uh, the beginning of this pandemic. Oh, well, good good for your son or daughter for taking that step. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it wasn't easy. And welcome, nice to have you back. Thank you. Um, Maria, I think you're driving, so I don't know if it works for you to say hello. Yeah, I'm just actually about to pull over, so um, I will be able to introduce myself. Um, yes, I have been following Michael on Telegram. I'm in a, I'm in a, like his kind of a little bit of a group with him. I don't know if he has other groups, but I did get the link for this um, meeting there from Michael. Um, and I went to one of his seminars at the Bikram's Yoga Studio on Commercial Drive for New Earth Learning Pods back in March. Um, I have two kids. They're both, they're in grade eight and grade 11 next year. And I'm really hoping to manifest some alternative schooling for them in the near future because um, figuring out how to weave the public school system once your kids are already in high school is a whole different <laughs> it's a it's a whole other beast it is. Um, compared to figuring out how to do it when they're in in the elementary school years yeah so both challenging but yeah the the high school one is 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 um, i'm trying to wrap my head around how that's how that's going to take shape so hoping to get some good ideas here. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And um, I, you, on the education portal, I think you were already tuned in when I was talking about that, but we do have a section in there called news. And there's all these different blog articles and there are several about homeschooling. And I actually think there's one that's even targeted towards like high school. So you might find some help there as well. So thanks for joining us, Maria. Thank you. Nice to meet you. We're happy to have you. Um, Nova, are you new here? I don't know. Hi, yes, I am. Sorry. Um, I'm on the East Coast and it's really dark here and past my bedtime already. So oh dear. Um, I just turned off my camera, but um, I am a teacher and have worked, I've chosen to work not in the public school system about five years ago, started a forest school out here and two years ago started a nature school, hoping to work with older children. Um, things kind of shifted when the pandemic <laughs> shut things down and changed things. And um, I'm now working with some local folks trying to start a, another micro school in the area. But um, yeah, I'm just really curious to hear about things happening elsewhere in the country and connecting with other educators. And um, I do have two children who are in the system, also going into grade eight and 11 next year. <laughs> but um, they 
for the most part have stayed in the system and my oldest would rather stay in high school than homeschool. So anyway, that is a challenge, you know, someone who sees the issues with the public system. But um, anyway, I'm happy to be here and to be a part of this life force movement. Great, well, we're happy to have you. Um, at, least, at least because you're very aware of what's happening in the school system, you can share that with your kids, right? And you're a step ahead of the parents that don't understand what's going on. So, so mm -hmm. that's good. It's nice to have you. Thanks for joining us, Nova. And I feel like there was one other person. Oh, Paul, I recognize you from last night, but I don't think you've been on the education call before, have you? I have not. No, this is my first time here. I've just been to two of the uh, the, the other Life Force um, BC Council sessions, and I'm I'm really excited about everything I'm seeing, and I'm really glad you're having this session. And, and we have um, we have four kids. Um, they're all teenagers. One's just graduating, but um, uh, the three others are in um, one's just finishing middle 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 school, and the others are all in high school. So. Yeah, um, it would be great to have an alternative, given the way everything's going. Yeah, and it seems to be a really, like it was like this, and now it's like. <laughs> yeah, that's a good description. Yeah. And, and uh, one good thing about COVID, right? It's like really brought this glaring awareness to what's going on in the public school system. Yeah. So, you know, when we're counting our blessings, that's that's one of them for sure. Yeah, silver lining, huh? Yeah. Well, thanks. I'm glad you joined us. That's really great. So presumably you've all been paying attention to what's happening within our public school system, right? From the cutbacks uh, of support for both teachers and student, students rather to some very questionable changes to the curriculum, to the sexualization of our children. Um, there are truly some very good reasons to be concerned about our kids continuing to learn within this system. So I'm very pleased to be able to introduce this evening's guest speakers. Michael and Gila have been involved in the education revolution, this is what I like to call it, uh, and the growing movement of protecting our children. And they've been involved for a long time now and they founded the New Earth Network. So they created this organization to provide options for parents and educators who are wanting to exit the public school system, but they're not really sure how. So they provide information and training and the confidence needed to take that bold step. So I'm feeling very honored that uh, to have the opportunity, um, oh, sorry, I feel very honored that I had the opportunity to present with both of them at the Worldwide Rally recently. And I can tell you that these two educators care very deeply about our children and they're working very hard to create solutions and change. So thank you very much to both of you for being here this evening and for sharing um, everything that you're doing with us. We appreciate it. I'll let you take over. Thank you. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm sharing the screen. Norma, is that coming through? It is, yeah. For you? Beautiful. Michael, before you start, I just wanna thank you, Norma Jean and Life Force Canada. It's so amazing to have this network of support and like-minded people and know that we're not operating in vacuum, but with so many people that are passionate about parallel systems and so sovereignty and all the good stuff that you guys are doing. Oh, thanks. And we and we're we're happy too. And you know what I love is that all of us freedoms groups are are starting to unite now. And that's pretty exciting because there's strength in numbers. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Hila. Yeah. Yeah, we're really excited to be here to present with you today. And um, I really believe that the most important thing is that we all feel compelled to take action in our own communities. And so that's the philosophy that I'm coming at this with when it comes to creating learning pods and uh, exiting the education system and coming up with alternatives to the existing education system really has to do with us working together in our community and developing solutions. And so that's the intention behind this program that we've uh, put together that we're going to be hosting in July is to give parents and teachers and educators and community members the tools to be able to take matters into their own hands and keep moving forward. Um, 
So really the question becomes, you know, are you ready to step away from the public school system? And we're here to help and answer any questions about how that's possible. Uh, first, though, we're going to give you a bit of an idea of how we came to the forming the New Earth Network. Um, we started with protests, and Hila's going to tell us a bit about that. Uh, it became really obvious that uh, after almost two years of medical coercion, that they were not going to change their game plan, even though they're giving us a little bit of a summer break. Um, it, it seems, though, that they're fully intent on driving an agenda that has nothing to do with our interests and our desires for our children. So we felt it was important to get together with independent teachers and develop community-based systems and solutions. Uh, maybe, Hila, do you want to tell us about uh, the protests and how everything started and so people can get an idea of how we came together? Yes. So for me, it actually started when my son went to high school, which was four, four years ago. And um, that's an eye opener of what's really happening in the system. And different things happened that made me realize that A, I'm not welcome as a parent. B, there's no community learners or any type of attempt to create community around the high school activities and see there were some things that were done without my consent. And so I had a few red flags going on even before March, 2020. So flash forward to um, May 21, 2020, we've received parents in the Vancouver School Board, we've received a letter that says that children 12 and up can now get the COVID vaccine and there's no need for parents consent. And that really started a group of us um, not only thinking and asking questions, but feeling the need to take action right away, uh, knowing what we did about those experimental vaccines. So we got together, we had a call for action for parents, and we met in front of the Vancouver School Board um, just to realize that their doors were actually locked and shut. Prior to that, we've been calling and emailing like a few months prior to that to have some um, answers to my questions with respect to our concern about any medical procedure without parental consent and some other procedures and measures regarding COVID-19, including the masks and the social distancing. Some of us realize how damaging all those are. And we, we weren't just ready to go along. So, no answering phones, no answering emails. A group of us got together and that's where I met Michael first outside of the Vancouver School Board. And we just had a spontaneous rally protest. And right there, we've decided to get inside the building. This is a public building. Other public buildings were open to people to come and interact with whoever is the public servant there, right? And this one was shut. Um, so it ended up to be a bit of a, I don't know how to call it, but- it a standoff, was, it was a standoff. It was, it, it was. And uh, this is what happens when mama bear, papa bear are waking up, right? We were, we were tenacious and we wanted to get some answers right away. So there were a few protests, rallies, uh, raising awareness, more and more people joined us, parents, Kids First organization was also part of partnering with us then. And eventually we, um, we managed to be a delegate at one of their official committees, which we still have a, our five minutes uh, presentation recorded there about our demand for informed parental consent and also explaining why and, and what we know about the, parent, the uh, experimental COVID vaccines and the damage that they cause. 
So we, we had a few achievements um, back then and it's, uh, it was the beginning. So now we realize that Yes, it's, it's great to protest and to raise our voices and to speak our truth and to try to work from within the systems. But at the same time, um, in order to empower ourselves, we want to create new systems and do what it is that is our visions and for our children and their future. So we created the New Earth Network, and uh, just to give you some insight into what our vision and mission for the program is, we are co-creating a thriving learning pods network for educators, parents, and children to expand their knowledge, skills, and emotional intelligence. The mission is to deliver educational courses and training for parents and educators to develop and lead learning pods programs for school-aged children. And in doing that, I feel so blessed to be partnered with Gila Russ Woodland, who brings uh, educational philosophy that is really built on following the lead of our children and guiding using their uh, aptitude and interests as our compass, uh, which is something that is not always respected in the school system. Everybody's to come out as a cookie cutter uh, version of what you're expected to be. And, um, and so Gila, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your educational philosophy. And, and I have some also some comments because I, I heard uh, uh, earlier um, someone was was mentioning, uh, Maria was mentioning about high school kids and I wanna share a personal experience uh, about uh, learning in high school outside of the school system uh, from my own experience. But Hila, maybe you could start with giving us your educational philosophy and then I can segue into that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, I'm a certified teacher, BC certified for independent schools. And I've been teaching in different schools, community centers, all ages, including adults. And at some point in my life, um, I came to realize that there's something more to what the system can offer. And um, I noticed with my son that as he progressed from elementary to high school, something in, in his enthusiasm and curiosity and love of learning was, was numbed down. And uh, I thought of all the things that we take for granted in the system that don't really work. For example, the ratio of one teacher to 25, sometimes 30 students, that's possible to really give each and every child the attention that they need. And yes, there are things that uh, in terms of budget and whatnot that are taking into consideration with how we created the old systems. But I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try something new and I'm going to create my own program. And I started it as after school care program. I wanted to have more freedom and um, one of the educational philosophies that I'm inspired by is the Waldorf education. And I really appreciate Rudolf Steiner and his philosophy and um, the understanding of seeing children as from, from a soul-based perspective and for who they truly are and to allow them to lead their learning and to follow their passion and curiosity. And basically, I don't even call myself a teacher. I'm, I'm, a, I'm more so in a role of a guide and support and I'm a learner. So we're, we're learners as well. We're all a group of learners. And our, I feel like my role is to provide a safe environment and um, a variety of um, um, subjects and um, different activities that will um, invite children to explore more and, and enjoy the journey of learning. 
So it's about really expression from the heart. It's about encouraging creativity. It's about allowing children to lead their process. Uh, it's about project-based other than, um, you know, compartmentalized subjects that are being fed according to a schedule. Uh, I can talk on and on, but I, 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 I would say this is it for now. And I believe that learning pods, the beauty of it is that when we create our own learning pods, we can direct with our own values and with any way we would want our pod to be like. For example, as Maria said, she has high school children. So connecting with other families and create their own learning programs, their own curriculum that is more geared towards that age. And then who are the children in the pod? What are their interests? How can we support that? What other external activities we can find that will enhance their learning? So it's, uh, for me, it's exciting to yeah. be able to create small micro schools, learning pods, and, and reclaim our, our power as parents and as educators. Yeah, and um, you know, what you were talking about in terms of finding in common interests and, uh, and in different age groups, something that I found when I was uh, in the older grades of, of high school um, that really helped me find myself as an individual and be able to feel good about myself in, in, a, in a learning environment was some of the mentorship that I had in music that came from professional musicians that were just interested in sharing and so there's a lot of people in our communities that are interested in sharing their skills that have a long history of expertise in various fields and to be able to bring the community together by finding mentors for our children that becomes more and more important because you, you know if uh you know, whatever we're going to do in our lives to be able to see somebody who is really great at something uh, when we're in high school is, is much more interesting way to learn than to be given a book where you read and memorize answers. So that was something that I found to be really helpful. I, I, my, we, when I was growing up and I was in high school and my parents were looking for a jazz uh, musician mentor for me, I had the chance to mentor with so many different people for different periods of time. And that really uh, uh, helped me explore something more seriously. It, it was more towards a career than towards getting a diploma of sorts. But, uh, you know, when I entered jazz school after that, I was leaps and bounds beyond anybody who was coming into the school uh, just because I had shadowed people who were professionals for many years. Um, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to, uh, to add to that, that it takes a village to raise a child and children. And it seems like we're coming back to community based, right? To who do we have around us? Like with everything that we are sort of exiting and building, we're creating our own small communities and more localized. So pulling from our own resources, it's so important to understand that I'm sure in the group of people that we know and the pods that we form, each and every one of us has gifts to share, has talent to um, display and have a way to inspire children in the pod. One doesn't have to be a certified teacher. Um, and we, we talk about it in, in our in our course, as you know, what are the requirements? However, the I love the village based, the community based, um, and not just in education. I mean, I feel like uh, part of, as somebody said here, the silver lining with COVID is that we're remembering our true nature and how we can live in a more connected way as a community. Yeah, you know, um, 
we know there's a problem. That's why we're here in this Zoom right now. But still, it's it's hard to accept that there is a problem for some people. I think you know, in this time where we have the summer, it's easy to forget that we've been given summers off every single summer throughout this whole thing, and that they come back with more abuse uh, and more problems uh, that. You know, we don't want to be in a position where we're constantly jumping when they want us to jump. We want to be making steps forward before uh, there's any reason to do it so that we can be in control of our destiny. Uh, so obviously, we know there's a problem with indoctrination and abuse of power and all this illegal coercion that's happening. And a lot of, uh, and what are the challenges? Because there is a challenge to, to accept the problem and then take a step into the direction of solving it. There are challenges because if we develop a learning pod, if, if we pull our kids out of school and decide to develop a learning pod, we're losing the comfort and convenience of the, of the system services. We're letting go of free access to educational resources. And we're accepting that the government schools are not in alignment with our core values. Because a lot of us would like to believe that when our kids go to school and we don't hear about it, that everything is going exactly the way we expect it to go and the way we want it to go. But the reality is that we know that the schools aren't in alignment with our core values. And so it's important that we take action into our own hands. So that's a problem that I think we really need to accept in order to take the steps to create solutions. I feel it's a very exciting, it can be very exciting to actually start thinking of solutions and what we can do together and how we can infuse our children's learning experiences with our core values, with what we would like them to learn, with what they would like to experience, right? So it's, uh, it's about co-creation and it's about really a shift in perception because in many areas of our life, we give our power away and we feel, oh, no, I'm not worthy and there's someone else that can do the job for us and they can do it better. And here we're sort of reclaiming our, our, our power. We're taking responsibility and it can be a very beautiful process of getting to know ourselves, empowering ourselves, exploring and understand that, you know, we can't really go wrong. Our children are inherently intelligent. They're brilliant. Actually, again, from my experience, the school system was kind of numbing down my own child and other children that I've been working with. So I feel we have like such a beautiful opportunity to, um, to, to support children from, from a different way of like we're doing here, rethinking education, reimagining, we're imagining something new. And, and as much as the unknown can be frightening, there's also an excitement and so many possibilities. And I feel like Michael, you and I were kind of part of our support is parents can be overwhelmed with so many possibilities and with you know their time and their jobs and how how to do that. So I think this is where we're coming into the picture of like creating some clarity, showing them some possibilities, different way of structuring learning pods and um, how they can gradually move into one. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, we're here to support you in that transition. And it, now is the time to take a responsibility, to have courage, to believe in yourself and your children and their bright future. We're excited to guide you in the co-creation of new children's learning pods, but the requirements are that you have a desire for freedom and love of children and community-based education, that you have some time and resources to invest in developing a healthy learning environment and that you have strong core values to integrate into your learning pods. This is important even just to create the space for it um, shows a level of commitment that you're going to see results for putting the energy into it. Um, but it does require that commitment. And that's a step that, that one would have to take in order to 
move into a world where we're in charge and we're taking the steps ourselves because otherwise um you know it's easily those steps are being taken for us here is the next place to go you're being told by the government and if you don't want to do that at some point you have to take the step yourself and so the time is now to take that step and um and you know it it might be a challenge but it's easy to do it one step at a time. And that's all that we need to do. So before the school year, this is why we're releasing the course now for the summer is because we wanna take these steps so that parents and teachers and educators have the resources to take one step in front of the other for this next school year and not end up in a situation where they are scrambling and regret not taking those steps in the summer before the school year started. So you can do it and we're here to support you. And look, you can see all the amazing fun times that Gila's had with her learning pod, you know, developing exciting new challenges in, in her educational solutions. This, this wasn't easy to get to this point, but look at the ease that all these children are having with their day and their activities. And Gila's just created such a supportive environment the opportunities for creative problem solving on the journey is wonderful and we're here to be a part of that with you and discovering the magic of exploration and possibilities. Hila, do you want to tell us about your your learning pod? Yeah, so for me uh, in the past few years I focused on outdoor education, nature education. I see that um, having children nine to three, um, most of the time sitting down in frontal type of learning um, is somewhat, I would say almost not, not healthy and not very conducive to their natural learning. So going back to nature, reconnecting to nature is fundamental and we can, we learn so much just from being in nature, observing nature. Um, some of my days are actually structures, structured as field trip. So we're going to places, it's the journey to get there. When we get to a place like there's one photo here from the Southland Farms. Uh, it's a very experiential type of learning, hands-on at times, uh, smaller groups. Uh, each child gets a lot of support and attention. Um, yes. Cool. So what we're going to do is uh, have a Learning Pod Leaders Training Course. It's four Zooms uh, that are going to happen uh, once a week throughout July. Uh, there is going to be a roadmap and resources and you'll be prepared for the first year. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me or you can call me. Uh, the course outline that we have for each date, so um, July 7th, we're going to be talking about learning pod structures. On July 14th, we'll be going over educational philosophy. On the 21st, we'll have a session on agreements and liabilities. And on the 28th, we're going to get everybody ready, mentally prepared and good to go to start operations for the new year. We have a 25% a discount for the course, if you go to the newearthnetwork.ca, sorry, newearthnetwork.ca, I'll put the link in the chat. Uh, and you can see the promo code on there, it's save25. And so you can buy the tickets either from that site or you can buy the ticket from the Eventbrite itself and the promo code for discount, I'll put in the chat as well is save 25. Um, also, if you wanted to get know, to know us more, I posted a podcast interview with myself and Gila on Odyssey. So I put the link to that podcast as well. So it's a 20 minute podcast that you can take a listen to and get to know more about where we're coming from and what we're all about. And here are some personal stories about our experiences. Um, 
Yeah, Hila, do you have, uh, oh, I, I want to say to, you know, why to sign up, because you want to be ready and organized to get started in the new school year, you want to have basic knowledge and support required to move into a successful first year of running a learning pod, and you really want to let go of the public school system and create a safe, happy and healthy environment for children to grow. Hila, do you have anything you want to share before we close the presentation? I, first of all, thank you, Michael, for being such an awesome uh, partner on this. And uh, I'm just wondering if well, we have time for Q&A from people. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you. If I would just make a comment when you were talking, Hila, about uh, experiential learning, it made me think about my youngest son in kindergarten. Um, every child got an ice cube and they had to figure out the fastest way to melt it. The kids were all running around the classroom trying to figure it out. And he just walked into the kindergarten bathroom and ran it under hot water and it melted. And the teacher was like, oh my gosh, he's so like, nobody else thought to do that, right? <laughs> and then in grade one, his teacher was all about worksheets and desk work. Here's a worksheet, sit at your desk. Here's the next worksheet, sit at your desk. And he just went from this kid who loved to go to school to this kid who hated to go to school. And that's the difference, right? You see it in kids. That's the difference. So anyways, that was wonderful. Thank you, you guys. Um, DK, you had a question or a comment? Yeah, um, just about your, um, I briefly looked at your, uh, your, so your curriculum for your, your four, uh, four Zoom program. Um, and granted, you probably mentioned this in your podcast. I'm only learning about this now, but one of the first things I was wondering about is speaking about a curriculum of your of your own program is there a, a session a private session that talks about creating a curriculum for your school year for your learning pod Hila, do you want to do you want to take that or do you want me to take it you know what i'm so sorry i was looking at something on the chat i realized oh i didn't even see what's going on on the chat could you please it was about about curriculum for the the children for the school year, right? Um, yeah. To interrupt, do you guys mind uh, stopping your screen share, and then yeah. we'll be able to see you better. Thanks, LJ. Okay, here we go. Ela, just in terms of developing curriculum for the school year for children learning pods. Right, that's a huge question and it's a very good question and it really depends in each and every learning pod because some learning pods will be uh, different ages and some would want to be multi-ages. Um, some would want to focus on perhaps more so creative arts. Some would be more into sciences. It's, it'll be up to the pod leader or leaders to decide whether they wanna, um, there's an option to actually borrow from the BC curriculum that it's already there and play with it or add on to it. Um, so again, that's part of the beauty of the learning pods is that whoever is in the learning pod makes the decision for themselves. Can you tell us a little bit about the emergent curriculum style, Hila, maybe? Yes, emergent curriculum, philosophy is uh, I apply it to younger ages. So kindergarten, I would say to grade two, and it's basically learning in the moment and listening to what the children are bringing to the space and working with that. And I, and, and I shared with Michael in, in our interview, uh, for instance, um, one time I was picking up a group of children from one school to my center where I was operating after school hours and we passed by a, a grocery store and they saw some boxes and like hey can we take the boxes to the center and I thought sure and and from collecting the boxes we started to learn about architecture and building and they started to create uh, forts and and all kind of imaginary um, structures and then it was all about uh, 3d versus 2d and then they wanted to decorate it so so the curriculum 
just emerged from the experience of the moment. And as facilitator, teacher, guides, we're there to support what they are what they are bringing and what their interest is and then we can we can document we can bring more information we can um we can um add on to that but initially the children are bringing the subject material that they want to focus on yeah and and you know i mean even the notion of following the interests of the child like in my own experience for example being interested in music um obviously there's a lot that could be learned even with math and music and so there's integrative ways that we can learn by following our interests so even in older children's studies um you know following the interest is going to keep the engagement higher than if it's just a bunch of worksheets, right? So uh, I think the emergent curriculum may be something that's, that's easier to explain for younger students, but you can also see how it is something that is really about listening to the child and finding and working with their interests and moving in that direction. Um, obviously, like Hila said, there is the BC curriculum that could be used, adapted, followed, uh, or completely done away with. And that's something that's totally at the prerogative of each person who's running their own learning pod, how they want to interface with the existing uh, standards. Did that answer your question, DK? Yes, uh, almost completely, yeah, thanks. Beautiful. Uh, Norma, you had a question? Well, I was just gonna say that the government wants you to believe that you have to follow their curriculum, but that's completely untrue. We're free to teach what we want, how we want, um, where we want. And like Keila said, it's, it's dependent on what the child wants or what, and actually, if you look back on some of our recordings, we had this really great guest speaker on, on David Andrews, and he was talking about ways to present um, like one lesson, but in it like one subject matter, but in a way that's going to appeal to all learning styles. And he was specifically talking about, you know, the, uh, teens, youth, young adults. Um, he didn't work with younger kids. So there is there is ways to do it for sure. And you know, we, we, we sorry. I was just going to say, and anybody looking to to start a pod and follow what uh, Michael and Hila are doing, they, I would recommend having a look back at some of the other guests we've had because they do speak directly about curriculum and, and whatnot as well. Yeah, thank you. It's really stepping into a new paradigm because a lot of parents sometime at, uh, before in our workshops ask Michael and I, what do I do? Like, how will they catch up? How will they know math and science and social studies? And will they be able to get into university? And, and those are type of questions that comes from a mind that is sorry, but I would say more so enslaved and bought into the old paradigm. But if we are to create the new earth, the new world, the beautiful vision for the future of our children, then this needs to shift. So it, all questions are valid. I'm not dismissing any questions, but I wanna invite people to think beyond that or to think or to understand that there's some things that we can even not imagine right now. Can you imagine that, that how, how the unknown can be so vast and full of amazing possibilities? So uh, do we need to follow a certain curriculum? Can we trust? It's really also about some inner work and inner insight that we gain as human beings, as parents, as educators, about trusting in life, trusting in who we are, understanding the human potential, understanding the amazing beings that we are. We are the technology, you know, they want us to hug into the technology and the whole transhumanism agenda. And I'm not saying stop using technology, but don't let it abuse us for sure and actually acknowledge ourselves as the highest technology. Um, in, in with respect to um, our intelligence, our emotional intelligence, and all type of 
a way that we have as human beings to perceive reality, to work with reality. Um, there's a school in England that actually works with young children and um, they're actually uh, learning with their eyes closed. And what they come to realize that up to a certain age, children can see even if their eyes are fully blocked and covered. So just to give an example of different abilities that we have, and children have them, children are still young, right? They're still connected to source more so than us adults that we've been programmed and conditioned. So they have an ability to actually teach us about our potential um, when they're still in it right they're still living it i love just watching children play and see what they bring how brilliant they are they know how to problem solve they know how to be super creative they are so innovative they are amazing and intelligent and it's not about about us you know trying to form them and teach them it's about allowing them to learn and support them yeah, what we want is we want our children to trust themselves and to be able to do the work in the world that they feel compelled to do. Um, you know, uh, working with a, a, a bandmate of mine uh, that grew up in a way where he was uh, completely given the tools to trust himself. He's doing research uh, and doing sociology research and physics research and biology research and putting these different uh, ideas together that in the regular education system would be frowned upon because you're kind of like doing your own thinking for yourself. Uh, but something I've realized is that a lot of uh, children who grew up in uh, schooling settings, such as unschooling, is, is something that I've met some children who grew up in those uh, containers. And, um, and they're often more entrepreneurial and more trusting of themselves and really stand out in a room of full of people. So, you know, when, when people think, well, okay, if I'm not given the exact tools that the public school gives and I don't go to university, then I'm going to be, you know, not a valuable member of society, but it's so not true. And, and, and I meet these people who are immensely valuable uh, and maybe they're not recognized on an institutional level, but that they have so much charisma and powerful uh, spirit that these are change makers. And that's what we need our children to be is change makers, not lemmings falling in line, right? I see a couple of questions. Uh, maybe Paul first and then DK, we could take yours after. Thanks, Michael. Um, I have two questions. Um, and we can I can trade off with, with, with DK. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, I, it sounds like what you're offering is a course, to, to please tell, correct me wherever I'm off base here, that's a guideline for how to homeschool essentially, and not a a actual school that you are running per se. Is that is that correct? Yeah. So the difference between homeschooling and learning pods would be that learning pods is a collaborative effort between multiple kids and families uh, versus a homeschool, which would historically just be one family with their kids and schooling on their own, basically. Okay. And so it's, you're, you're kind of make, allowing people to democratize this all over all over Canada, I guess, is the, the possible. Um, it's happening. Approach. That's this. This is this is what's happening. OK, awesome. DK, you had a question. Yeah, uh, I just had like maybe questions and comments. I was just uh, typing. Um, but I don't want to waste people's time, so I'll just go quickly through them. Um, something that some of us are beginning to learn is, and me too, is called common law. So um, like law versus legal, right? So, I mean, if, maybe if the government tries and says, hey, um, you, you can't do this, you have to do it our way. Well, what I'm learning is that your kids are your property. And you can, unless, you know, if you're not abusing them, you can teach them in any which way you want. So, um, and another, uh, one example I wanted to give, which is pretty interesting is that, um, 
my parents are from Ghana, which is Northwest Africa, and the capital city is Accra. And at least last time I was actually there, um, there are so many cars, and but there's no there are no traffic lights at this one roundabout thing. Actually, there's very few traffic lights. But anyway, um, in North America, you'd think that there'd be a lot of accidents, but actually, no, there are no traffic lights. Cars are very close to each other, and there are no accidents. So just think of what that implies within this context, and I think you'll you'll see what I'm trying to say. Um, there's a word called auto autodidact. It's I think it's a person who teaches themselves, like Michael, you're that's I think what you're talking about. So there is a word for what we're trying to in culture within our, our kids. Um, and also just to give a bit of encouragement to anyone, to anyone who's thinking of, of doing of taking this course, I, I would say you probably don't have to get it right the first time or the first year. You can even have just a mini learning pod, a micro one, like where you do, um, if you don't have to all the resources, like more than two families or two or more families or whatnot, I would say just do what you can and uh, maybe amalgamate it to the, the public school system if, if you can handle it. And then slowly year after year or month after month, just become more um, autonomous and then eventually leave the school system. So those are just my thoughts. I think that's a great point. You know, everybody has uh, uh, their path and it's really listening to that and the guidance that you're being given. And if the guidance that you feel from within is to do these gradual steps, then that's the right way to do it. And, um, and yeah, I can't comment specifically on the common law stuff. I know there's a lot of opinions around uh, what or what not to do um, when it comes to that. Uh, but I think that it's good that, that everybody's exploring different facets of how we're going to sovereignize our mentality. And so the takeaway for me from a lot of that stuff is that we want to be in a frame of mind where we're not enslaving ourselves just because there's no other alternative way it's a it, to me it's a mindset thing and so um yeah i don't have any expertise around the common law stuff but uh, and i know do know there's a lot of opinions uh, on on what or what not to do around that uh, so i can't comment in depth but i think that the mentality of taking into our power our uh, lives is what's important to me paul you had a question or a comment Yes, please. Um, and is there such a thing as an online portal to support this, like, so the kids can communicate with each other, the, a remote teacher and some students from scattered across? The so not, not, th not through our uh, uh, program here, but there is so many different things that are emerging. There's, uh, uh, yeah, so I could definitely, maybe if we keep in communication, if you send me an email to, with that question, I can provide some resources. Sure, thank you. Also, we, we do offer ongoing support to participants yeah. that would want to start their own learning pod. So this will be done via Zoom when people are not um, in proximity and... and um, yeah, I mean, so I, I guess one comment I would make, uh, Paul, is that what's important from my perspective is that people are motivated and making uh, change in their community. And of course, there are definitely uh, uh, access to further out community. And there are some people who live in areas where there aren't other people close by. So that makes sense. Um, but I think right now with the unknowns of what's to come, we really want to be in the physical presence. So developing connections with the people who are closest to us and avoiding, uh, relying on, um, uh, online clusters of people is is in my opinion the best thing that we can do right now but that there's so many different resources and of course the uh life force canada portal is one of those resources that connects people across the country through uh, online portal nice yeah i thought maybe a, a hybrid would, might be really healthy but sure yeah i i, I hear you yeah Anybody else have any questions or comments for Gila and Michael? 
That was really great, you guys. I just love your passion. And uh, like I said earlier, it was so great to, to meet with you in person and, and feel that energy personally. So it just, uh, I know that your hearts are like so committed to this. Uh, LJ, sorry. Oh, you seem to be, we can't hear you. All right, sorry, I had my mic up. <laughs> Um, it's not a question, it's a comment. And all that I can say is every time I come with Norma Jean and her guests and people like Hilla and people like Michael, it gives me such hope for the future. It gives me hope that we will be able to extract our children from slavery so they they don't have to go through it, you know? And, and that is for me what I absolutely honor about all of you. And so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, LJ. Thank you. And you know, there's, I feel like uh, homeschooling, um, people started a few years ago, I guess some people had the premonition or the intuition to want to take responsibility, take back their power, and it's growing exponentially. So it's, it's beautiful to sort of ride that wave and, and, um, bring more awareness to other parents of what's possible instead of them feeling overwhelmed, feeling afraid, not knowing what to do. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I hear you and, and I feel like, um, yeah, let's keep holding the vision and, and our intentions of what it is that we're co-creating and- And empowering the parents. Mm -hmm. because they've been so disempowered with the structures that we're in. So that's really important. And empowerment is giving them tools. And that is so beautiful. So thank you, I'll yield. Yes, and that goes a lot deeper than I think people realize. Um, I was in a grade one, two class a few years ago. And the teacher said, NJ, come here and have a look at this. And she had this memo instructing her that... Um, that if a child came to her and said, I want to be referred to as a they or a he or an it or whatever, that she had to honor that. And she said, she didn't actually have a problem with that other than how am I going to keep it all straight? But what was really disturbing was that the memo also instructed her that she was not to share any of that or divulge any of that information with that child's parents. So it was, I mean, it was, that was probably about four or five years ago. It was already happening that parents were being pushed out of, and you know, that's pretty scary. Um, Maria, Maria put in here, what are your comments on missing social milestones like prom? And um, I think that we kind of saw some of that over the last couple of years because uh, COVID created that exact situation where kids were missing their proms. And so I know a lot of parents got quite creative around that and they, they just did their own. And a good friend of mine, uh, her daughter graduated last year. And so they, they used their backyard and they, the parents got together and they cooked this beautiful dinner. So they, they had all these tables with, they rented tablecloths and nice dishes and stuff. And the parents cooked the dinner and they served it all dressed up and fancy. So, and they decorated with twinkly lights and they had music and, and they just created the experience for them. And I, you know, I think that grad and those sort of things have become a little bit crazy. And why can't we, why can't we redefine that when we're redefining education as well, right? Like it doesn't have to look the way it has traditionally with great big, huge boat crews and all that. It could look different. So. Um, yeah. And, and also I replied to Maria in the chat as well. It is tough because it's like, you know, they're dividing uh, uh, our communities in these ways where people feel excluded. And then, you know, it's, it's challenging, but I do remember when I was in senior years of high school, that the parties that the kids created themselves were a lot better for the kids than the ones that the school created. And so, you know, empowering, this is, a, uh, the, the, the opportunity is of empowerment. So you want something that represents you. And if you're in senior years in high school, then the, the tools to be able 
available to to create something are there you know have a fundraiser that, to raise funds to pay for a venue for a night or something like that if you want to create something you know figure out what it is to budget for it these are all skills that that are transferable um, and can be used later on too right so um, it's empowering to know that you don't need someone to provide it for you but that you can create it yourself for a kid that's very empowering yeah, I agree. And I think that at this point, the parents are doing all that work. I mean, the kids might participate in fundraisers, but it's the parents that are organizing it all and searching out how to rent places and the kids, the kids could get more involved for sure. Well, I, I remember I, there was a, you, you know, I, I actually, the people who organized our grad things when I was in school, they were all kids. They all organized all these different events. They ended up owning clubs in Vancouver. Oh, like awesome. that's what they, they ended up basically having businesses doing event planning, etc. So you know, I mean, it may not be for everybody, but it's something that's transferable. I mean, it doesn't mean that you're going to be a club owner or, or do event planning, but that these are skills that are valuable. And so it's worth just doing it and, and getting your feet wet. Great. Michael. Yeah, no, this is a perfect example, actually, of something I wanted to bring up. And, um, you know, the idea in my mind right now is I love how we're doing learning pods and it could be you know, different parents or different people that are more inclined to be teachers doing different types of skills. And so in my mind, um, what we're talking about right now, I'm wondering, um, is, is there a plan to almost have like a larger network where let's say like there's one pod leader that's really good at mechanics. There's another one that's really good at art. And then you kind of bounce kids around depending on a project or a specific yeah. thing that you want to learn in the curriculum. And then you know, this example of the prom would be awesome because let's say it's in a specific uh, part of Maple Ridge or a specific part of Surrey. Could all of those learning pods then get together and say, okay, at the end of the year, we're all going to do a collective prom yeah. and then kind of do it that way? Because that's like the real alternative that I'm trying to figure out in the future because um, it's more of a community on a larger scale. So is that part of the conversation that you've had with people that have graduated from your courses? So, you know, this this whole project in moving towards learning pods is it's all as a response to the time that we're going through. And so everything is building in real time. Uh, but, Michael, I think your idea of collaboration is definitely something that we're all interested in that's been brought up at our events and our courses uh, where, you know, people want to collaborate. That's what we want to see people to do because um, we can't do any of this alone. And so like you're saying, having a, a connection with people of the same age that have learning pods in different areas to be able to come together and to do things together, for example, such as having a prom together is definitely something that's in the cards. And it's a matter of people taking action. I mean, one of the things that uh, is stopping us from being able to get to that point is enough people that take one first step to go in the direction of exiting the system because if people are too scared and they have one foot in and one foot out um, it's you can't get to those really really juicy points of collaboration where you're helping each other on the outside you know and that's what we want we want people to be taking things into their own hands so that we can have those established connections between learning pods etc for sure yeah it, it is part of our vision actually as the new earth network so we're definitely about networking and connecting learning pods and creating events where we invite many pods to participate whether it's prom or other subject related um events or teaching just just as you were saying let's say if there's someone uh, who is uh, an amazing musician or mechanic or artist or whatever and they want to create a workshop for a few learning pods so that's a possibility michael and i are definitely looking into that for the future awesome and just a quick follow-up then um at least in here in bc do you have a rough estimate of how many learning pods currently exist not not at this time no okay there's there's quite a lot i know um and 
probably many that we don't know about too as well, right? Because there are uh, quite a few organizations that are, are working to help people get them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like Michael said, this is like a, a real time thing. We're all kind of learning and growing at the same time, trying to figure it out as we go along. And homeschoolers seem to be a pretty good resource for us as well, because like Hila said, they've been in this for a long time. I know I was said to someone here recently, remember when we used to think that they were like, you know, the tree hugging, granola eating, you know, well, it seems they were onto something, right? They're like miles ahead of us. So, you know, it's a learn as we go. Yeah, and maybe right now they're a, a existing groups, you know, maybe they're not under the same title that we call right. learning pods, but there's like nature school, fresh yeah. learning, uh, there's the arts umbrella, right? So there are different um, places where people come together and learn, uh, but there's no commitment of doing that as a full on alternative to the public system, as far as I understand. Um, so yeah, it would be interesting to see how many learning pods exist and, and how many will emerge soon, hopefully for September. I think we're going to get a pretty good idea in September because a lot of people who are interested in this are hedging. Uh, I know a few people who are, you know, just they got in right away and I've been watching them grow. And then there's a lot of people who are just nervous to make the step. But uh, but we're really going to see, I think, throughout the next year and and that uh, in September, we're going to find out uh, where people are at with that process. Michael, can you please remind people here the podcast that was with this woman that is into unschooling? And I, yeah. I love that interview with what's his name, Kid. Um, Kid Carson. Yes, and she is laying out beautifully uh, her process of shifting from a full-time job and kids in school to being full-time. Um, home teacher or uh, I just put the link in uh, in the chat moving into unschooling her children and and the amazing transformation in their lives and in her connection with her children and the way her children were thriving so I, I feel it has such a beautiful potential and it's important for people that are still on the fence to listen to people that have gone that way and um, see what an amazing um, life changing that can be on many levels. Brian, you had a question? <clears throat> yeah, that just kind of leads into my question. Um, the current public school system, there's <clears throat> guidelines and restrictions on the education that the kids get. And a uh, new system, we can explore new alternatives and take, uh, hopefully, ch children's education to a higher level and excel and be efficient far beyond the current system. <clears throat> and this leads to another question, which Hila uh, Hila was talking about, what about the kids? Can they go to college? Can they go to university? But even if you have, say, a little bit of a higher education and a better system, going back to these universities and college would almost be like a step backward. Right, w would they even wanna choose to go to university? What will our future look like? Will we have universities? Will we need universities? Maybe the universe will be our <laughs> university. Uh, perhaps we'll need other skills and abilities. Uh, however, we have learned from parents um, that homeschool their children that, and there are researches that show that children that were homeschooled were uh, very successful in universities and colleges, despite the preconceived ideas that that people have about uh, homeschooling as perhaps not uh, be the best way to prepare them for higher education. That's that's not the truth of what the data shows. 
any idea of uh, what the transition is like for those students that have been homeschooled going into university or college? Is they find it difficult, the transition? Um, I don't know. I don't know anybody. Do you do you know anybody who's done that, Hila? Well, I, I met I met somebody who had done the homeschooling and then they went to traditional schooling after because they wanted to have a social life. Um, and I think that the transition from the academical standpoint, like keeping up, I don't think that was the challenging part. I think that they just didn't realize that it was going to be uh, better with the homeschooling than with the traditional schooling. And that sort of was the the impression that I got was that she she didn't find the transition to be super jarring, but that it was just about having a social life. And, uh, but it sounded to me like she would have preferred to have just kept up with the homeschooling stuff if in hindsight, basically. Uh, yeah, so, but that doesn't sort of speak to the, college university aspect but i i think that she did end up doing higher education and everything and she's just very intelligent and i i mean just knowing her gives me a lot of confidence in that you don't need to have that specific uh it, you know public school system education to be able to learn higher education i mean if you are able to read and you have an interest in learning um you know and you can listen and take notes then you can learn something right i mean we all go on to youtube and listen to uh the occasional college uh, uh or university talk and and it's a matter of applying ourselves to be able to learn it uh, not necessarily um you know, don't necessarily need the whole spectrum of education prior, you just need to really be interested in learning. And so I think that that's what the homeschooling does for children is it gives them an interest in learning, it helps them stay interested in learning. I just see, um, before we move on, uh, Maria said thoughts on a soft exit from school from the for the high school age, any thoughts on a soft exit for high school age kids? I feel like ideally, if I think about my son, I would have wanted to have um, a few other of his friends like speak to their parents and create a, fo uh, a learning pod for um, a group of friends to start with because it is about socializing for high school and they form meaningful friendships and you know, I wouldn't want to pull out my son from his social network, but I would try and perhaps promote the concept to his um, friends, families, parents. Um, that's one way that I'm just can think of right now. It is a challenge. I, I totally get it. High school age. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, one way that you could start is by even if you wanted to 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 do one step at a time, starting with uh, with a study group or something like that, where uh, you get together and you get into a group to do a study group. Um, eventually you could do uh, distance learning. So if you wanted to keep to the curriculum and keep the study group, but not be going to the school itself, you could be doing a study group and doing distance learning online. That would be one way to kind of slowly move off of the system potentially. Good answers. Um, Paul, you had your hand up. Did you still have a question? Well, I do, but I, I'm going to have to run quickly here. It's, my question it was kind of based on the other one. It's not so much a concern about their ability to, um, the kids' ability to transition into a, um, into a, a higher uh, educational institution uh, and their learning ability. I think that would be fine. It's the, it's the admissions criteria. Um, uh, maybe something can be shared afterwards by email or something like that. I, well, every every institution has their own admissions criteria, but in, it, depending on where they want to go, but they can write like a grade 12 equivalency type exam. And, you know, so it, it, there is no real set answer. You kind of have to look at where your child wants to go and, and see what their requirements are, mm -hmm. or what kind of program they want to go into and where we'll accept a, a, a grade 12 equivalency. 
Anybody have any other answers on that? Well, wouldn't it be great if the kids were in school for like nine years and do the grade 12 equivalency? Yeah, yeah. well, what's stopping them? So some of it is based on credits as well. So like, again, it, it's really each, each institution is a little bit different. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Anybody else? I think we covered so much tonight. Thank you so much, Hila, Michael. That was so informative. And uh, thank you for what you're doing on behalf of the children. Oh, we do have another question. Kareem, hi, Kareem. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Sorry, um, I'm a bit late. I saw the link and I was like, yeah, I was looking for this. So yeah, apparently all the message, uh, I'm a solo parent. Uh, my daughter is going to kindergarten in September. I registered her in a, in a Catholic school because I thought it was the best option. I mean, I saw all the options. I, I saw Waldorf school as an option. Uh, she's in the waiting list. But, um, you know, I just want to find out it is uh, an option for me to find a, a, someone to help me and support me to educate her at home. You know, I live in an apartment um, close to a nice area, but I need to keep working, right? So I cannot be distracted during the day. So is any support that we can have or that you know that I can reach out to, you know, to not, to not integrate her in this system because I'm scared, right? I don't want her to go through all of that. Where so are, I, I where are you located, Kareem? Where are you? I'm in Olympic Village. Oh, you're in Vancouver. Okay. Yeah, Vancouver. Um, so yeah, I've been looking many options and I don't know maybe how to find an educator that maybe can come a few hours in the beginning or find other parents around the area that we can support each other. Um, just looking for that option as well. I think we've we've talked before. Yeah, uh, we met. Hila. Yeah. Hi, how are you? And, and I, mean, I can say that I'm going to start my own learning pod as a teacher in Vancouver, Canby Village area. I don't know if it's something. Oh, amazing. Yeah, it's very close. Can, can Thank talk, you. We can talk later. Okay. Thank you. That's wonderful. Well, isn't that great? Sergio. Do you have any other, um, you know, options? Uh, I'm happy to hear as well, but I will reach out to Hila. Thank you so much. Yes, and there's always, you can always find like supplementary help through the education portal and yeah, there's, um, thank yeah, you. that, that would work out great. Did you have anything else, Kareem? Um, well, I also found this school, it's called Freedom School BC. Mm -hmm. I think they already have a system. Uh, I just registered her. Uh, to find out more information, but it, maybe it can help to anyone else. Yeah, so their service is a little bit different. So Gila and Michael are uh, providing some training for parents and educators that want to start their own pods. Mm -hmm. And Freedom Schools BC is helping parents connect with teachers who already want to start a pod or want to okay. teach for a pod. So yeah, so you're talking with Ronnie there. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Sergio. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, sharing all these ideas. Um, I, I, I also uh, found the, the link uh, recently, and uh, I have three, three children, and I moved from, uh, from BC to Mexico uh, to, to, during the pandemic. So, uh, it's been a little bit of a challenge um, reintroducing the children to, you know, uh, 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 another system in, the, in a different country, and also uh, we're figuring out which is the best, you know, uh, system for them, because all this uh, time we have discovered so many things that we didn't realize at the beginning. And we don't want our children to go through those, I don't know, <laughs> uh, processes to mm -hmm. just to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So um, right now we're like um, looking for uh, teachers or teaching assistants that will allow us to uh, teach our children to read and, and write. So we think that's the, uh, a very important tool 
at, at, at um, small age. And uh, we've, we've been uh, looking at different schools. Uh, someone mentioned uh, Waldorf. Uh, we've been looking at the Waldorf School and uh, other private institutions. And what we have found is um, like every, like every, every time we look for another school, uh, we, we find that these schools are not registered with the public system. So um, I don't know, it's, it's like something uh, trending or at, at least here uh, that we have discovered that not every parent is interested in having that certification mm. because maybe it's, it's not really that um, important anymore. But I, 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 I don't know, I just wanted to share that with you because I thought that it might be relevant. And the, the question that I have is that, um, do you have any you know, suggestions? Maybe the program that you were uh, offering uh, works only once the children know how to read and write. So I'm just uh, thinking of, um, well, asking if you have any thoughts about that. One of the models that we have, um, discovered here is a, a, a Christian model. And um, how it works is that uh, some, it's similar to homeschooling, but they have like a on-site facilitator and the children go and they do everything they have to do, but there's an adult that is prepared just to give them or guide them in the process, but everything is about them discovering how to uh, build and educate themselves on their own. And so you, you're located in Mexico now, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And so you're, you're, what you're trying to do is figure out how to homeschool your kids or find someone who can help you homeschool them. For reading and writing, you're saying. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So because I, I thought, oh, maybe I, I should put them in the system, right? And they just mm -hmm. carry on. But then if we need to move again or something, it's mm -hmm. a lot of activity. So we think, okay, so at least they need to learn to read and write. I, uh, I actually, personally, my, my business, my company is called Time Shine Teaching. And what I teach is, is I help parents and educators. Uh, I train them in how to teach their kids how to read and spell, how to oh. read, read. That's what I do. And that's what I've done for the last 20 years. And so um, I just put my, um, my business website in the chat. If you have a look, it's called timersignteaching.com. And I, I do teach virtually, right? So I do a Zoom, Zoom six-week program. And it's, um, it's all about how to effectively teach your, child's, your children rather to read and spell. And it's great if you start young, especially. It's a really great program. So there's, there's that. And then I'll let um, Hila and Michael, if you want to talk to speak to that at all. No, I was actually thinking about you and, and yeah, same. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a terrific program. And actually, Sergio, um, you can go and uh, you can go onto my website and have a look around if you like. But also, um, we post all of our Zoom calls here on our YouTube channel. And I did a presentation here, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago on what I, what I teach and why I teach it the way I do. So I can put a link in the chat for that as well. If you want to have a look, you'll have a better um, idea of who I am and what I do. And, and uh, I'll put my email in there. You can always reach out and talk to me about it as well. Okay. Sound good? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. So there's, there's my email and I'll, and I'll attach um, the YouTube channel as well. Brian, you, you had another question or okay. another comment? No, let me just uh, figure out how to take away my hand. And there's the YouTube channel and I'll find the right video for you. That's the, where I'm doing a presentation. Uh, Brian, did you have uh, another comment? Yeah, I recently got a letter about where I want the funds to go to a public or a Catholic school. And uh, 
we need to investigate this because we want to get our kids out of these public and Catholic schools and into an alternative school and get our funding going in that direction. So this is going to be something that uh, somebody should be investigating how to get a hold of that money and get it to where we want it to go. Yeah, I, I've thought about that too, Brian. It's like I'm, I'm tired of paying for something that I'm not using. Um, and, and I think there's probably going to be a lot of, like, I don't know how that's going to pan out in the future. Like, there was another guy, I was with a different group before Life Force, and he was saying his son, I don't know how old he was, maybe grade eight or nine, 10 or something like that. But anyways, because of COVID, he wasn't going to that school anymore. I don't know, he wouldn't wear a mask or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't go to that school anymore. And somehow he got funding. Really? And he got, yes. Well, one thing so, that we're working on here, there's a group of people working towards it. Alberta has a parents um, uh, union that they're forming. And so there's some of us looking at how we can form a, uh, a union here, but my understanding is that it is all kind of falling within the system, like the governmental system. So there is a bit of pushback, like some people just want to step away from it completely, right? So um, before, I, before I forget, um, for anybody who, who's unfamiliar, you can save the chat. There's, if you look at the bottom, there's like a little happy face and then three little dots. And if you hit the three little dots, you can save chat. And therefore, anything that's in there, any contact info, any websites that are linked or whatever, yeah, it'll save it to your to your file. So just so you know. I'd like to speak to Brian's comment with respect to budget and budget for education. And I think it's very important to explore that. I mean, very important. homeschoolers, they do get a budget per year, and it depends if they work through the the uh, learning districts, school districts. So there is some budget for, for home learning, uh, homeschooling. Um, however, and you know, I don't have the link to back it up, but I remember Susan Stanfield sharing information about a woman who um, took to court um, a school district claiming that if a school get it was about ten thousand dollars yes. per child per year that she felt she deserved to get that money, and she was able to do that. Really? Yes, and she had four children. So uh, it, it it sounds uh, that it makes sense, right? If you are the teacher and you take on the full on responsibility then the, the same money that allocated to the school should be coming back to you in order to teach your children. So I, I wish I had more information about that case, something from- And that was the exact number that this other guy had said, $10,000. Mm -hmm. Now this money, we need to get it out of their hands and into the hands that we want it to be in. Mm -hmm. So there should be some investigation on how to do this so that we can all do this if we want to. And right now, if you if you work within um, uh, under the government, I think it's about eight hundred dollars a year you get if you're homeschooling and and you're working with their homeschool district. If you just decide no, I'm not I'm not having anything to do with you guys. I'm just on my own. Then you get nothing. Um, here's a little piece of information that's interesting too, and it may shape our future. I know that Quebec is trying to outlaw homeschooling. They're trying to do away with it. Because they they're like they're cluing into the fact that we are taking our con, our parental control back, right, and taking back our children's education. So that's happening in Quebec right now. So and I'm this thinking, is where common law. Who was speaking about that? Maybe uh, DK. This is where common law can come into the picture because if our children are our property, then we make decisions, and there's no other higher force that can tell us what to do or how to do it by any of their jurisdiction. So it's good to be informed about natural law, common law, mm -hmm. even, even just from that perspective as wanting to take on our children's education. 
which is another thing aspect regarding uh, education is we need to teach the children the law and all this stuff. This is not something you have to go to a special school to learn. You should be learning this in, you know, elementary school, high school and human rights and freedoms. You should be learning all of this stuff. They are killing us with their rules and their regulations. They call law and they're violating our rights and freedoms. And this needs to be in the education system. And Brian, I think that I keep mentioning this to you, but you would be like the perfect guy to put together like a little workshop that could be shared even virtually, right? Like among learning pods and homeschoolers and, or even if it was just a curriculum that, that you gave to teachers and they taught it themselves, right? But obviously they, the teachers would need workshops because it's quite complex. In, it's such a big transition from the way things are right now to what is actually the way it is supposed to be, that it's hard to uh, get people to go along with this because it is like night and day. Uh, Maria has just put in the chat here that Connor Boyack is an author who teaches common law and other natural law for kids ages K to 12. You probably know about him, don't you, Brian? Uh, nope, not Connor Boyack. I don't oh. oh, Interesting. Okay, good to know. Thank you, Maria. Um, just a, a quick question. How do I uh, copy the, the content of the chat? Um, so, so there's those three little dots, Sergio, right beside the happy face. When you click on those, the top drop down menu, it says save chat. So you just click on that and you do that right before we say goodbye or before you say goodbye. And uh, it'll save everything up to the chat till then. And it'll go into your, um, like a Zoom file on your um, computer. Okay. It's beyond a laptop or a, like a desktop. I don't know about iPad. Are you, oh, are, are you on your phone or are you on a laptop or? No, I'm on the phone. Oh, you're on your phone. Oh, that might That's not. Probably I, I cannot find it. I'll, I'll do well, um, Sergio, if you put your email in the chat, I'll send Yeah, but I can do a screenshot or something and then just. Oh, okay. Because I don't mind emailing you the whole the whole chat if you want. Okay. Yeah, Thank if you. you. Just, if you just put your email in there. And also, just before I forget, too, if you're new here this evening, um, if you put your email in the chat, I can add you to our email list. And so when we have our... Uh, education think tanks and we have wonderful guest speakers like we do tonight um, I just send out one email ahead of time saying hey this is what we're doing this is what we're talking about please join us here's a zoom link uh, you don't get inundated with a whole bunch of emails from me you just get notified of what we have upcoming in the think tank um, we are this is our last think tank for this until September unless I have a special request to have one um, with a subject matter that someone would really love to share but um, yeah, this is this is our closing one until September. So I would love it if you if you're on here and you've enjoyed what we've been talking about. If you just go ahead and put your email in the chat, I'll add you to our email list. So thank yes, you. Yes, yes, thank you. I um uh, I just want to share something. So there's this book called um, or titled uh, "Teach Me to Fly." Yeah. And um, it discusses, I don't know if you've read it, but um, I think it's a very good read and I just wanted to share it with, with everyone today. Okay. Uh, Do you know who the author uh, is? It, it has, um, I'll, I'll, I'll look for it here in my notes because it's, I think it's uh, from India or something like that. So I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay. I, uh... But um, you, you can find it on Amazon and the... Um, the cover is like a, a a child flying a kite. Yeah, I think I've I've heard of it, and I believe that we were talking about it. We did a we did a study of the Angora School in the Netherlands, which is a really cool alternative school model. That again, if you go back onto our YouTube channel and you look at some of our previous meetings we've had, we've really had some other wonderful guest speakers, and we've covered some really interesting topics. But the Agora uh, school model in the Netherlands, um, that was their motto, teach me to fly. And I think it was based on that book. So thank you for that. And Kareem, You're yes, welcome. I will add you for sure. And Michael, yeah, I will add all you guys. Thank you so much. And Rethink for Life 
That is you, Maria. Okay. I will put you guys on there for sure. Um, so thank you again to Gila and Michael, and thank you for what you're doing. Uh, honestly, I'm so grateful to have connected with you guys through this education think tank and um, the opportunity to work with you was wonderful. And I hope I get more opportunity to do that in the future as well. Thank you. you. All the success in, um, in your training session that's coming up. I, I recommend you to everybody I meet and uh, thank you to everyone who came this evening and joined us and for all your questions and your comments and for just being here because this is truly going to be a, a group effort and like michael said it's it's you know everybody has to take action so thank you to everyone who is and and even just coming here and being a part of a conversation is the first step so you know thank you to everybody who's done that as well and so nice to see some faces that i haven't seen for a while too right so dk and james and brian and yeah so thank you everyone did was there any other closing comments did everybody get a chance to save the chat that wants to no thank you to you though for hosting this and really staying committed to the mission and the vision wow. thank you and thank to Life Force Canada and Keila and Michael, who are awesome. I can vouch for them. They're doing an amazing service to children and the world at large. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. So I just want to say something. Um, I just, um, I was just browsing and I found this group just in a, a few minutes ago. So I, I really don't know uh, the background or, you know, the, the main objective of of the of your organization you, you mentioned a think tank oh I Life Force Canada is. yeah so this um I'll put the link in the in the chat as well or Brian are you on that <laughs> you probably are already on it um so we're Life Force Canada yeah you came in a bit late so you missed my introduction but we are an organization made up of volunteers from across the nation coast to coast who volunteer our efforts to try and create the new earth so we are we have nine pillars. Education is just one of them. We also have agriculture, health and wellness, um, media, natural law, the economy, like just a, a whole a whole lot of um, different think tanks and, and um, projects that we're doing. So this is just one of them. Um, my name is Norma Jean. I facilitate the education one. But uh, yeah, I highly recommend you go on to our website the life force Canada website and join because then you then you can explore all the different things that we're doing so yeah this okay. is yeah um I, I used to live in richmond oh okay in bc and um I, I i ran for a school board trustee a couple of years ago uh, as an independent guy and um you know i i did a lot of research on um you know on education and at that time it was about the introduction of the soji curriculum oh yeah so it, was, it was an interesting time and um i don't know uh, maybe in the future we can discuss uh, these things but i was thinking um uh, like one of my proposals was to build a, a think tank that has the the interests of the children that's the main objective you know uh, but um i i you know i i, I really uh I'm grateful for uh, having the opportunity today to just bump into you and everybody. Well, you, were, you were divinely guided here, I think. <laughs> we all yeah. are, aren't we? we? It's it's this time, you know, auspicious time. We're all connecting and uh, yes, raising the frequencies together. That's together right. Together we rise, right? That's, That's the right. life. <laughs> it's our motto together we rise and we are and it's it's a beautiful thing to witness isn't it watching everybody uh waking up and coming together and wanting to create change and working towards it and you know um there's always those people that take the lead like Hila and Michael and 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 but but what we find is that those are the those are the groundbreakers but people keep you know they're it it what's the word I'm like it motivates people it inspires people, other people to take action as well. So, so I'm really glad you found us then tonight, Sergio. I, I put in the um, chat, I put the, uh, uh, where did it put it here? Okay, I put the Life Force Canada um, okay. website in there. And so you just like join and then you'll get emails that let you know about all the other think tanks as well. And uh, 
like I said, we're shut down now until September for the education one, but please feel free to reach out to Michael and Gila, reach out to myself. Um, I put my email in there as well. And did you want me to send you the chat then, Sergio? Yes, please, because okay. if I just copy paste it, uh, it will work. Yep, sure, I can do that. And I see you put it in the chat, so it's all good. We're ready to roll. Okay. All right, thank you everyone again. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for everybody who comes to these all the time. I have, I have thoroughly enjoyed getting to know all of you and appreciate and love you so much. So thank you for all that you're doing. And let's keep up the good fight, you guys. Thank have you. a great summer, Norma oh, Jean. Thank you, Rita. Thank you so much. I didn't even know you were on here. You must have snuck in <laughs> a little bit later. Oh, I was reading the chat and I always go off you know, camera when I'm reading the chat. So okay. I've been okay. here. <laughs> nice to see you too. Okay. Yes. Well, enjoy your summers, you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks again, Michael and Hila. That was fabulous. Really wonderful. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.